Welcome to another edition of Strange New Pod. I am your captain and host, Julian Brown, and we promised that all Latinum was exchanged legally and with <laughs> integrity. Except for you, Eric. We know what you smuggled out that Platinum for. Damn straight. A copy of Faith of the Heart. <laughs> Right from Starbase 80. Put it right in my Shame pants. Took you. it out. Oh. <laughs> Squirreled it out. <laughs> Speaking of Rear Admiral Eric, I'm joined by the best bridge crew this side of Starfleet HQ, the Borg Queen of Puns, Lieutenant Brittany, the man with the best Eric Bana impersonation that actually puts Eric Bana himself to shame, Lieutenant <laughs> Hawk. And we know she's going to have all the theories tonight because of the DMA. Commander Giraffe, glory to you and your houses. Got them all in my pockets. <laughs> yeah, all the contraband, the all the latinum. Guys, as you could see, <laughs> we're joined by a very special guest. I don't know what you're doing here so soon uh, after you've been on, but we're very happy to have you. Um, I just we, missed you. <laughs> we missed you too. <laughs> we, we have to stop meeting like this. Um, you are you are though the fastest repeat guest in Strange New Pod history so far. So wow. yeah, you are. So uh, Nami Malumad, welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, I mean this is kind of a mixture of your idea and my idea. So yeah, I'm giving well, you the credit for this. Time, one. Last time I came here as the composer of Star Trek Prodigy, which I still am. <laughs> That's right, but. Um, <laughs> We but, understand. Um, yeah, you you now are the composer today, um, of something else. Yes, today I'm a, I'm a coming on as the composer of Strange New Worlds. Oh, <laughs> uh, say what? Yay! And uh, yeah, I'm super super excited. I can't wait for this show to come out. So like, I mean, this is this is the Star Trek show that will make a lot of people happy, <laughs> um, <laughs> and it made me very happy. Um, and I'm, I'm just delighted. Like everything is top notch. Like the acting, the everything. I, I just I can't wait for you guys to see it. I love that. We're dying. Broken for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Well, I I uh, I kind of like wanted to do this since I did like Q and A. So that was like, <laughs> I want, I wanted that show. So I, I'm you, like, you missed, you missed Spark. That's why. I, mm. I <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, he's we, very handsome. We've, we've known this, we've known this for, for like months now because Aaron uh, spilled the bean <laughs> uh, without knowing if it was well, okay. I, I appreciate you keeping. <laughs> we've been holding on to this information, but we finally got the okay from you to, to do this tonight, which is awesome. Um, we're, we're so excited, not only for, for people who are going to watch Stranger Worlds, but obviously for you, like how awesome. <laughs> so amazing. Um, now, yes. now from Prodigy and Janeway, now you get to return to Enterprise with Captain Pike, Spock and number one, like... How does that feel? It's a long road getting from there to here. Oh, so you didn't! <laughs> you didn't! How does it feel? <laughs> um, it, feel it feels great. Um, it, to be honest, like it, it was, you know, in the making for a long time, so I kind of knew where this was heading. Because uh, after I did the Pallet of Prodigy, <laughs> that's where I got the call to do this. So oh. it was like a long time ago, like the end of 2020. <laughs> so, wow, that's crazy. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, th these things take a long time. Um, but yeah, it's it's great because now I get to to you know to be in a different area and a different people. Like it's but it's the same essence, it's the same values, it's the same Starfleet. Um, and it's great. Like it's it's everything I love. So I'm happy and excited. <laughs> I um, I know you can tell us so much because it's still, you know under the shroud of <laughs> secret uh but ca what can we expect from uh, the score of strange new world is there gonna be a lot of tos throwbacks come on i want the tos throwbacks yes there, uh, there or are, is it there are tos callbacks for sure uh and that's uh you know i mean it, it's just it makes sense <laughs> Uh, but there's a lot of new stuff too and you know uh, as yes we know the the core crew but there's like a lot of characters that we don't know yet and we are going you are going to we all we're going to love <laughs> so um yeah uh there's a lot of spock <laughs> yes a lot of who spock. a lot of who giraffe uh, a lot of spock <laughs> there's gonna be a oh, there spock is. and roll album there he is there he is that's the very the yeah 
Um, I, I think he's my favorite version of Spock, too. Ooh. 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 Okay. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you on this one. So, uh, speaking of TOS, is there any chance we're going to hear that original TOS theme a little bit, a little bit in the opener? Uh, I can't say that. <laughs> exactly. Oh! Yeah. Oh. I knew you couldn't say it. We, That's why we I had to ask. <laughs> we had to ask. But, uh, yeah. NDAs, I, I EMAs, so it's grumpy. all Star Trek. Yes. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it's 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 a wonderful show, and I and I think the fact that it, it goes back into like episodic, is really like um, gr- grounding in in that feeling of of going back in time kind of thing, like in into TOS and, and you know that that area of, of like ma- that's how TV was made, and I feel like every every episode brings a you know a unique story with you know. There is there is a, an overall line of like, like arc for for the characters, but like I, I love it. I personally love it where there's just one story at a time, and there's not like a, you know, you don't have to binge everything like right now. Well, you want to, but you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> it's like all of Trek now. Yeah, pretty much. Um, this is like this is the one time I'm happy that Star Trek. And, and Paramount Plus is is not doing the binge model because I think there would be that like desire to want to do that. But then like what happens if you do that and, and it's just done and gone? Like you're going to get to experience, I think, for the first time since, I don't know, God, the 60s. If you if you count TNG, but if we're talking about the original Enterprise, you know, the, the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s with the movies that like you're going to get to see the enterprise like week to week and have like, we already know your music's awesome from, <laughs> from prodigy, mm-hmm. but to have like, you know, the music and the enterprise on TV, like that's something really special. I agree. I, I see it on my screen and I feel like, Oh my God, I want the enterprise. This is, <laughs> this is insane. And then the recording studio, we're recording at Warner brothers and the, the control room totally looks like a <laughs> it totally I does. believe it. <laughs> So, <laughs> um, so the, there is that as well. Um, yeah, I'm very fortunate, like to to be on the enterprise a, a lot. <laughs> uh, so I had a question. I don't know if you can answer it or not, but um, are there individual themes for the characters in the show in the composition? And if so, do you have a personal favorite? Uh, there are individual. Uh, it's not always like that. So it's it's a little different structure from Prodigy in the sense that like it's a larger crew <laughs> and, lar- you know, and, and because it's episodic, then we go from place to place quite quickly. And there's like, sometimes it's a very different uh, setup from where we were in the previous episode. So you kind of want the music to actually focus on what's around, like, you know, to, to build what, what, what that world is. Um, and so it's... It, it's a little bit easier with Pro- to do that with Prodigy because you do have these these same characters. They don't always go like, um, and and it's just six characters. <laughs> um, but yes, there 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 is distinction and sounds to to different um, uh, crew members. I, I can't really elaborate yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, but you will you will see. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, just as long okay. as like. Pike's theme isn't just like a monotone, like beep and two beep. <laughs> beep, beep, beep. Yeah, it's a bunch of horses oh, neighing. Man, man. <laughs> on repeat. Yep. That's all you need, kids. All you need. Um, we is. know that that you're super busy uh, I, doing I work. Do have to go back? To yeah, on, on on another show right now. Uh, the fact that you took time to to share this news exclusively with us uh, is is so awesome. We're, we're so excited that you were able to make this announcement. You guys are announcement. awesome, and thank you. Uh, thank you, guys. Um, I Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, listen, so uh, come come May, June, let's let's have you on when we can actually talk uh, in depth about the, the music. Yeah, yeah? We, we should. Yeah, yes. that's, that's awesome. where I can collaborate and we can talk about it. And by the way, I just want to say real quick before you go, everybody on Twitch, all of our listeners say a huge congratulations. So. Yay. Thank you, guys. <laughs> this is fun. All right. See ya. Bye. See ya. Nami Malumad, everybody. Bye bye. We're going to be right back. I got to reposition everyone. Yeah, we'll be right back. Stick around.
Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, that was that was quite the the exciting <laughs> announcement. Uh, how, how's everybody feeling after that? I know like we all haven't been able to to talk about it because we've known for so long, but now we can. Nami is composing Strange New Worlds, and I feel like what who better? And that's no that's no mm. diss to Jeff Russo, who's also a legend. But yeah. um, my lobes I, I are tingling. <laughs> <laughs> no i think it's amazing like i love her music like i even watched the girl in the window across the street from the whatever the woman the the woman it was so good <laughs> yeah and yeah. she did like a perfect job just emulating all those thr thriller movies i cannot she wait i cannot yeah, wait. yeah she did oh, yeah. i can't wait to watch that <laughs> it's so weird that show's so weird <laughs> and i'm so glad that i don't have to shut up anymore so <laughs> yeah, i know it's nice it's nice it's like been one of those like I'm I'm horrible with secrets, so the fact that I've held no. this in, no, yeah, I don't want to hear. It. I don't hear it. You guys all know this about me already. Yeah, um, no, I know. That's why I pick specific secrets to tell Julian. <laughs> I'm like, they will be safe for definitely this amount of time. <laughs> yeah, and and not much longer. It's the friendship um, NDA. It is. I'm prepared. It is. Um, guys, it. be before we get into things real quick, uh, we we have some quick news. Um. We're hoping to have our Captain Picard week schedule up this coming Monday. Stay tuned. Giraffe has been a freaking godsend getting that prepared. We have Captain Picard week is going to be awesome. You guys have no idea. And and the, the, the amount of excitement that we're getting from the other podcast, I think it's going to be something really special. So everybody wants to play because, Picard ball. It's because they get emails from me like every I know two it's days, like this so they're just so like excited. Bright joy. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that, and then, uh, if you don't know, if you haven't been on discord today and you're part of our patron collective tonight, right, fo uh, right. Following, following tonight's podcast, we are doing our first ever, uh, post pod hangout. So if you're at the Cerritos lounge or above, come on, join the zoom, have a drink or two, shoot the shit, have fun. It's going to be great. So I was, oh, for that. you say shit. And I, was I like, did. Oh, I did. I did. Yeah. No bleeps <laughs> this week. Nope. No bleeps this week. Hell down um, for no. Uh, speaking of our patrons, um, I, I think I meant to put a name in the outline and I never put one. Who wants to thank our patrons tonight? I think it was Eric. I think Eric was supposed to do it. What? Well, thank you, patrons. For, 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 okay. <laughs> no? Who wants it? You want to do it? Offer. Oh, I yeah. can. I can. Yeah, go for it. Wait, wait, let's both do it, but a different name every, at a time. Every right? other one? Yeah, you go first. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I go first? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Simon Steger. Jeff Reeve. Mariah Gossett. Jen Stein. Tina Alexander. Joe Saperito. Noe Santos. Kung Hui. Haven. Tataka Nagumo. Kara Kennedy. Mark. Fernanda Nogales. Smick. <laughs> Ian Davies. <laughs> Amy Grace. You're horrible. Laura Linderman. Reasonable stranger. Ooh. And Colin Davidson. Teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> Fusion. <laughs> Boba tea. Yes. Oh man. Good stuff, guys. Good stuff. Um let's Eric, get right into it. If we ever meet in real life, it's gonna be so chaotic. I know. I, I don't know what to do if that ever happens. Which it will at some point. <laughs> but, it um... will. <laughs> Is, is Eric tacos. still on the fence for for Mission Chicago? Everything is asking, so crazy. Getting vague answers. <laughs> I, I, um, I know. We're just going to keep bugging you, and maybe you just randomly show up via transporter. That would be awesome. That'd be, yeah. Oh, that would be so cool. Yeah. Terrifying. Maybe. Transporters Terrifying. are scary. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, let's get right into the strange new loop. Very, very uh, per this episode of Discovery this week, uh, if you were out for a good time and aiming to spend some Latin, on some questionably obtained goods, what one item from the Star Trek universe would you want to buy? <laughs> I Which let us know as well, Giraffe. <laughs> oh, my first ID, ID is so absolutely out there. I can't go last because I'm sure nobody will think of this. <laughs> I will pick the thing that everyone will pick. It's, it's a holodeck because who wouldn't nice. want that? It makes you food too. You can hang out in wherever eating random food yeah shit wait yeah. you're gonna buy a holodeck i would buy a holodeck mm, a yeah. wall holodeck okay which program who installs no that? no no. sorry Gets just the, the, the room programs. i would have all the programs all of them <laughs> and so you would too. so you would illegally obtain the holodeck somehow yeah, yeah. 
So Quark illegally? Yeah. Yeah, why not? It's like I torrenting not, in the future. I, <laughs> so questionably obtained goods, but it, it, that's that, that's a good answer. The mm. holodeck is good. Mm. I like it. I like it. Who else has got something? Ooh. It would just be it would variations to... of strange of uh, faith of the heart in there. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Every room. Uh oh, I would definitely want some some sort of memorabilia from uh Picard's uh bridge office and that. Could it be the recorder? Yes. It's the recorder. Or the inner light. His big mm-hmm. book of Shakespeare. Yeah. Fish in his tank. <laughs> his little ships. The, the little, little ships. ships. You little broke ships. your little ships. Mm. So good. Yeah. The yeah, recorder. It's good. the recorder. It's yeah. the recorder. We know. The recorder. Who else has got something? I would buy Jidzia Dax's heart. <laughs> she doesn't mean emotionally. She will buy the, the physical, physical heart. Yeah. heart. He died, okay. I need heart. something tangible. I'm surprised you didn't say you would just straight up buy yeah. her symbiote. I mean, I mm. feel like that's harvesting of some sort. Mm. It sounds like again, her heart's an organ harvesting. Yes. It's questionably it's got obtained dark. goods. It's, it's, so. I mean, no matter what, I it's meant, organ like, harvesting. Metaphorically, um, I don't know as far as like objects. It's hard because well, like, you'd like you don't to think have to a little buy bit anything more. because it's Starfleet and they don't do money. So like I could just ask for like. But there is a Starfleet, like there is a black market. There is yeah, a there market. is a black market. Come on. Oh, then obviously self, self-sealing symbols. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, this, yeah, this question was meant like <laughs> if you one. were at the black market and they had questionably obtained so goods from Star Trek in Universe, in what would it be? <laughs> so, so the first thing I thought of when I read that question, was in DS9, there's this, like, it happens, it's like several episodes, like maybe three or four times, but Quarks speak, and he speaks with Odo, about a, um, a Vulcan erotica novel that he has adapted <laughs> for the Holosuit, oh yes. which is called, which is called Vulcan Love Slave. I swear it's a thing. And I remember watching the episode, I was like, <laughs> I want to know Audio what's slave? in that book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want God. to know what's in that book, and I will pay Quark to have. And there's several like, 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 book of it, like two or three or four, because he speaks with Odo, Odo about it. So yeah, that's what I would like acquire some a contraband, forbidden, censored Vulcan erotica novel. This is my answer. Thank you. Giraffe knew. She saw this question. She's like on site. I know exactly I, what I need. When you said it, I was like. I laughed at myself for thinking of this. <laughs> <laughs> I want to buy uh, a Woshikun's uh, workout routine. That's like, a good one. How much can I pay you to tell me how you get those guns, please? <laughs> at the oh, beach, man. it's this way. <laughs> the the beaches Listen. of Riza, you can get whatever you want on Riza. She's is... got definition, okay. And I was like, the last time my arms looked like that, I did martial arts <laughs> forty hours a week. <laughs> Teach me your ways. Uh, we have we have some decent answers uh, on on Twitch. Uh, Haven though this I don't know if they meant this. They meant they said Kelvinverse personal transporter, but I don't think that there were personal transporters in the yeah. Kelvinverse in the in the last oh, one, wasn't there? Yeah, he had. Well, it wasn't okay. So like that wasn't a personal transporter. Like Khan stole like a giant piece of tech. That wasn't like something that attached to your lapel, as if I remember correctly. But I mean. I, I think we could change your answer safely to Disco crew 32nd century didn't, personal transport. Did Beyond have one? That, that's why that motorcycle was zipping all over the place? No, they were using the Franklins. Oh, yeah. Shit. Oh, and they were, they were using the Franklins. No, they were using uh, Jayla's holographic technology. Mm. That's what oh, it was. Jayla. It wasn't actually <laughs> transporting. You know what? Um, I buy that motorbike. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I could do they better do than get Kirk. transported in Beyond. They do get transported, but using the Franklin's transporter and the bike going yeah, back and they are, forth, they, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, is because Jayla's like from their tech. insignia, yeah. and they like yeah. get like yeah. And then uh, Beef Lomain would like to to mention Eric for your holodeck purchase. All, all of the Moriarty's need to come with it. Yeah, as yeah, well. yes, <laughs> absolutely. The Moriarty, yeah. the better. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, I do someone have, should I, buy the Ferengi throne. Welcome. Beef Lomain says as well. So, or the Grand Nacus' stick, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I would wait. I should go in the holodeck because I could be Sherlock Holmes. 
against Moriarty. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so dope. Oh, you could oh. Tu- you could totally punt him into submission. Bridge. I could. Um, Galaxy Star Queen seventy seven. I it says I would buy the Discovery transport badge. So like, mm. I think personal transporters. Yeah, that's. I think everybody, if you were living around that time, would want one of those. Seem they would come very handy in a pinch, if you're trying <laughs> to like smuggle some latinum. So. Um, my answer, uh, it came up mainly because I just watched this episode recently. So I, I feel like when people in the 32nd century, like right now in Discovery's timeline, who are in Starfleet Academy or just like in school, are probably getting educated about Federation, Starfleet, and Klingon history. And I feel like at this point, Worf is probably like a Klingon legend because of everything he went through and everything that that he experienced like the Klingon civil war, his discommodation, everything, everything that Worf has been through during that time. I think he's probably going to like go down as like, I don't know, someone of legend, like close to, to Kalis. I think like, that's my opinion. Like O'Brien. I, I could be wrong. So yeah, you're gonna exactly. Buy like O'Brien. No, but I am going to buy the Batleth that mm. he killed Duras with. Oh. Because cool. what an item to have. I could be like, this is the blade. I think you can say Doras. he handled it under much duress. <laughs> I want to know what the hell is going on. I feel like that would be part of Mariner's um, stash. Contraband? Yeah, contraband. Uh, yeah, no, she definitely has it. <laughs> yes. Warf, let me yeah. have this one. Yeah. yeah. I did have a wild card answer on that. It just came to me in that. But I don't even know if it would be a, if it would be salvageable. But I would love General Chang's eye patch. Ooh. Oh, yes. I don't I, think that's I, answer. Uh, not anymore. <laughs> I mean, that thing was like drilled in his head with some pretty heavy screws. You never know. I mean, it's not like that bird of prey disintegrated, you know? Listen, they found a knife at the Death Star wreckage. Uh. Okay. (laughs) I'm sorry. I had to. I had to. Wait, none of us answered Murph plushes. We're not true fans. Uh, We're not true fans. (laughs) That's because it doesn't exist in the Star Trek universe. Murph plushes don't. Oh, no, that's not true. Rock made a Murph plush. Exactly. Dang, oh, I'm not bamboozled. stealing something from Rock. Damn, that's yeah. cool. We're not stealing. We're buying. We're <laughs> acquiring. <That's right>. uh, <laughs> Acquisition. Talik says <laughs> the Kayshawn puppet would be one thing. So oh, yeah, 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 I'd buy Kayshawn. one. Mm-hmm. Kayshawn, mm-hmm. when, when he was, was a puppet, <laughs> when the puppet fell. Uh, and uh, any, yeah, go ahead. B Flow Maine is trying to out pun Brittany. Uh, writing, it might be clinging onto him still. <laughs> 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 Mm, 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 mm. see what you're doing <laughs> um i think these are all really good answers this was a fun strange and loop the question is did giraffe read the outline and prepare for the strange and loop this week <gasps> like <gasps> i would read the outline <laughs> <laughs> giraffe is like i was busy getting promoted almost, 30 seconds I almost, before i came on i almost <laughs> was like going like yes kidding me I was like, yes, yes, I read the outline. And I was like, nobody's going to buy that. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I would. I would. Um, guys, we were so busy uh, right at the top of the show. We wanted to make sure we gave Nami her time to make her big announcement. If you're just joining us, you weren't here at the top of the show. We say welcome. Uh, the top of the show uh, composer Nami Malumad was here. She announced that she is scoring strange new worlds. Really exciting news. But we also didn't mention what we're here for tonight, like every week for the next two and a half years we're here to review another episode of star trek <laughs> um that's right discovery is back from its mid-season break with episode 408 all in giraffe you're up first this week your thoughts on this episode first of all i like prodigy i love prodigy but thank you discovery is back <laughs> <laughs> I I cannot rewatch more, even more this episode. Like when they go on break, I need to know. Um, so great episode, I loved it. It. Where do I start? Do I start by like the the, the poker uh, game, like such a throwback? Do I start by Owashikun kicking butt and taking names? Uh, this like forehead to forehead, like. Yeah. That was uh, awesome. Uh, like I was like, mm, I was vibing. Um, what's his name? The guy has. I like has. I loved has. I loved him. Has 
has first of all i went back and i rewatched the episode with the subtitles thank you paramount and i wrote down all the little um like proverbs or whatever expression that he says because there are so many easter eggs in these things i wrote them down i believe I love it. them yeah it's insane um it's a good episode because we finally know what's up mm -hmm. and yes. thank you thank you this I, I suppose we're gonna talk about it i didn't read the outline <laughs> so, um uh thank you discovery for <laughs> for giving me a star trek explanation you know we're gonna meet new people something happened like they're ignorant of us they just like destroying uh everything for their for their resources yeah mm -hmm. yes and you know what i see you discovery like criticizing our society destroying the planet <laughs> for yep. profit they always know what they're doing mm -hmm. yeah always but i'm so glad that there's actually something we're gonna look forward to and not oh it's a baby who cried. I will never forgive them that. I will Me never neither, don't worry. forgive them that. It was a Kelpian, that. first of all. It was a Kelpian. And a you baby know, Kelpian. Are you ready with the with the, the beep or whatever? But mining equipment, destroying planets. I see you, Kelvinverse. I yep. see you. Yes. Nope. Yes. It absolutely <laughs> was that. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Um, I you was gotta like, get that red oh. matter. <gasps> a mining equipment, a mining equipment for real. Like you cannot do that to me. I mean, I, I, I was. You cannot do that to me. <laughs> I will give a minus. So be prepared. Uh, I do think that I'm ready for episodics because it it loses of its how can I say excitement because we cannot see the whole process of going through the DMA and I think that it was a good episode but they just gave us that crumb and like the rest was kind of weird around like there's like development of relationships and like she's Burnham meets Book again and then in the end they're like oh by the way uh, so it's a mining equipment they're like okay so i want to see again the the wall thing you know binging it just yeah. binge it and i think it's going to be more cohesive because it starts to be like a bit decousu i'm gonna speak french i don't know yeah no like, I don't unraveling know. sometime yes. so yeah and it doesn't help that we had that hiatus in between because then you're just like oh now no. we're coming back into it but i will yep. say i think they're just preparing for valentine's day because will you be mine ning equipment <laughs> Yes. Just, just get out. DMA just get out. is just drill moving around, guys. Just... It was there all along. Uh, uh. Wow. I'm gonna just at this point, I'm just gonna use like a non-Star Trek soundbite. That is one big pile of shit. Speaking <laughs> of Jurassic Park, mm. no, I'm just kidding. I guess this uh. is a good segue into my thoughts, Giraffe. If you're all done, I am. Okay. Well. <laughs> I loved this episode. It was a little, like, I agree that it's a bit jarring jumping back into a show after, like, they keep doing the hiatus. You get a chunk of this show, a chunk of that show. I get why they're doing it, why they have to. That's fine. Um, but I would, I think the the plot and, like, being focused on these characters would be much better if we were seeing the same group every week. Um, that being said, I feel like this episode definitely had to happen during Black History Month because it was all about... Please always bet on black women. Oh, well, and Michael teamed up. They're awesome. I love their dynamic. I was like, man, I want to see more of this. We already knew from like the the season trailer that they were going to have this moment. And we're like, is Oh, in Fight Club? Like, what is all the stuff that's happening? So to see it finally play out was just awesome. Um, but for me, like what I took away from this episode, apart from like the really great, you know, relationships and interpersonal dynamics that you saw between these different characters that was like, a lot more heavily focused on the characters themselves instead of the actual DMA like looming in the background. I like as I was watching it, I think I was halfway through this episode and I was just like, oh my God. Every scene so far has had one of the main four black main characters in this episode, like that were important to the plot. Cause 
obviously there's more um, like on the actual crew of the Discovery that just aren't always shown. But I was like, every single one of them, there was at least one of them in the scene at any point in time. Which, I mean, it shouldn't be that rare in 2022, but like, I still had that moment where I was like, wow, there's a black character in every scene. Sometimes multiple black characters in every scene. I was like, they, like, it's refreshing to see. It happens a lot more in sci-fi than in other shows because they're able to do diversity more. I don't know, Hollywood, get your shit together. But it was just really nice to see. And I was like, this just felt like such a little, like, chef's kiss. I see what you did there. It it was intentional because, like, that stuff doesn't happen by accident in the terrible media landscape that we have that's not so, these like, days no no yeah um, so i like that nice anything else on that was that your your thoughts no i just i listen like we know the the whole book michael will they won't they like things will probably turn out fine in the end but it, it it's i like getting my heart broken repeatedly by seeing their like long <laughs> faces and like oh man when they're playing cards against each other and you like see this chemistry and this vibe and everything but then the look she gives him at the end when he wins, I was just like, Michael. Oh, but that was such a good break. look yeah. because she was still I know. she was still totally playing him. I know she was, but it's just like she's so good, Sonequa, If you're out there, I know you are. I have, I have. <laughs> you're and, such I, a great I, actress. I, I, I don't want to skip ahead because I, like everybody hasn't given their thoughts yet. But like, I, I I heard so much talk of this today, like on the Ready Room, like Sonequa talking about it and uh, David Ajala talking about it and Will Wheaton talking about it. I none like no one has gotten or said the words broken up yet, which leads me to believe that they are still going to try and figure this out. But well, yeah, they are they very much like up. on episode, like opposite ends of of the fight right now. Um, and and before before you go, Hawk, I just I, I want to say something going back to what Giraffe said. You said that like you're you're kind of like excited for for more episodic, which is funny because like this season of Discovery, I think, has been its most episodic season so far which is why i think it could be a little jarring like there's not like the dma is mentioned but there's been like a like a lot of standalone episodes even though this is furthering the plot of the dma this could still stand by itself you know what i mean mm-hmm. so i don't know that, that that's my opinion on the season i think it's been very very like i hybrid-y. do want to add in that book when he said the line of like michael always like wins basically like she she's always like one step ahead sort of thing mm-hmm. yeah it's just always it's that foreshadowing the episode exactly. and i feel like book like, should have known that too yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well he uh, does and that's the thing yeah. like i don't think he really expected to come out of that as winning and even that like ending where it you know he happens to win the card like you know you're just like but michael did something because we know right. who michael is mm-hmm. yeah. it was great Hawk, your like thoughts it. on this episode uh, First up, it was a great episode, just all around. Yeah, it does function as a standalone. You, you know, even though it carried us into the DMA plot even further and gave us some very real, concrete answers. Um, but yeah, the main crux of this episode was it took place in a casino. And it was great, and uh, we were discussing this before the we started. That uh, Owa was definitely, you know hedging the bet up from that by losing and throwing it in that and um i just figured it out that was a great little callback to enter the dragon mm. you know, remember roper and that mm-hmm. looking, this checking yeah mm-hmm. nice so, callback i mean we saw Very how nice. many pull-ups she was doing in like a previous episode this season and everybody was like dang always got guns there was no way she was losing this fight period oh no she knew what period. she was doing but she they she knew they needed a certain amount to, you know, latinum or to get what they were after and that. And it's like, you yeah. know, now, no. <laughs> and she wouldn't even let Michael in on the plan and that. Michael was so worried about it. He's like, no, no, come on. Just you need to sell it. That. You need to sell it. Mm-hmm. You needed to you be do. worried, you know? Yeah. She's literally yeah. like the head security officer in like the Terran Empire, you know? Like, mm-hmm. we know. I always got it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the next big callback was uh, to actually one of my uh, probably one of my it's not my favorites but i did listen i i love the movie maverick you know i love poke i love any movie maverick's really a poker. fun movie <laughs> it is a fun movie in that uh and yeah the whole thing with the poker was great not even though i didn't know what the hell was happening in that because of, like the cards <laughs> these cards like, look all two, the same weird do you have two jokers does that win <laughs> I thought those were uh, kings or queens at the end. That's, yeah, that's they, all, yeah, more than likely right? that's yeah. what they were because it was a flush. He had a he he had a royal flush, right? Which is like the or just a flush, but that's the best hand in poker. So. Was yeah. was the queen a Cation? 
They look like a cat. I'd have to go back and look. <laughs> That'd be really funny. I really have to rewatch that because there was so much to take in in that. But yeah, I, I mean, the whole question of whether they're broken up or not, and that it's you got it to have faith in the heart, man. They're going to get back together. Mm-hmm. You think I don't get think there? they will. Do you think they'll get you don't there think from go here? All in. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't want this. But I feel like there's going to be a uh, book sacrificing himself or stuff like no. this. No, why? Why? Get out. No. Get out. Why? I can why see those things. Blast I, I can giraffe see has been hurt enough in the past by TV. <laughs> <laughs> this is why she's like, it's probably going to happen. Exactly. I'm preparing French myself. Cynicism. I'm preparing myself because when that happens, I'm going to be able to survive it. If it doesn't happen, I was wrong. Yeah. You can have yeah. a giraffe was wrong. <laughs> I, I'm still waiting for that one. Uh, Buick Space Wagon on Twitch asks, "Why is it always Texas, Hold Texas Hold'em? Why? Because Texas Hold'em is great. I love Texas Hold'em. If you play everyone in space knows about Texas. That's true. Um, anyway, uh, Eric, your thoughts on this week's episode? I thought it was a good episode. I think what hurt it for me was the the mid season break. It just seemed weird coming back to it. Um, it oh. it didn't for me. It 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 also didn't feel like a mid season premiere. I don't know if that makes sense i agree I, I get that yeah yes not i think you have to remember i think you have to remember too that yeah. i don't think that this season yeah. was meant to be split up yeah but prodigy being delayed and premiering when it did had a lot of effect on mm -hmm. all sure. the other mm -hmm. shows so sure. i get Maybe. that that's a that's a great observation though because it didn't feel like like a big monumentous return mm -hmm. right it definitely felt like where it is where it's sitting in the season makes sense for it but right because of where they broke it it just seems like a weird spot um that being said, I thought it was a good episode. I I love the the casino, like everyone said. It's nice to see a casino planet that's not terrible. Um, Pretty cool. <laughs> I, mean, they didn't, oh, oh, oh. Uh, I felt that. I they didn't want to stampede. I, I think I think I think Eric was talking about. Um, I was talking about both. Uh, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's Star fine. Wars. Um, no. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was thinking of Freehold. He was thinking of Star Wars. I, no, so. I was thinking of both. Um, yeah. The um, <laughs> the OO fight was amazing. I love that. Um, like her pulling her punches at the beginning and just sizing him up was such a good it's it, it's like it's like watching warrior and you're just like yeah you know yeah. that she's gonna fuck them up but you're just waiting for that moment when she's like you know what i'm gonna crack my neck do a little this yep. and then i'm gonna just I was kick ready your ass. for her to drop the act i was like come on round two right you're gonna drop it oh no? round when, three you're gonna drop it when she was like when she was just down in that lower pose it's like oh shit's gonna go down yep. i was just like this is amazing i'm getting goosebumps oh, from just thinking about that it's so good and the way she just like so it was so strategic in that she kept hitting like you know you know throat nerve cluster yep. she was like um, right here boom <laughs> Right here. <laughs> so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to professional wrestling real quick, uh, and and Joe will appreciate this. He'll know what I'm talking about. There's a there's a wrestler called uh, Malachi Black, and he's very like dark, gothic, like very very cool character. And uh, when he comes into the ring before he's about to face his opponent, he um, he like sits cross legged either in the middle of the ring or or in the ring corner and just like looks up at his opponent with like these dead eyes. And I was like. Okay, oh well, I'm feeling it. Like I'm feeling the Alistair Black vibes. He's all he was also called Alistair Black. But I was just like that that was a cool moment. Not that they probably thought even an inch of that when they were choreographing that scene, but I was like, oh, I'm a wrestling fan. Oh, this connects. Weird, but mm. I I I dig it. Um, Sorry. No, 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 it's awesome. Um oh, I wonder if she's a wrestling fan now. Yeah. <laughs> she's just like, you <laughs> know what? I'm gonna steal this. No. Um we'll find out. Yeah. Um I, the the Michael and Book card game was so emotional, and I love when Star Trek, especially this show, Michael's really the heart of the show, and seeing her and Book go through all of these emotions throughout mm -hmm. that whole scene was like masterclass of acting. Those those two playing off each other, fucking brilliant. Like playing yeah. mm -hmm. like together yeah. at first, and then like everything in, and even when they say all in, it's just like it's not just the latinum, it's their hearts and the, everything. It's just oh, it's oh. heartbreaking just to think about. Um. I really love when Star Trek also goes into super sciency and the fucking display that they had for the DMA at the end yeah. with the with the blob. Oh man, yeah. it looks so good and I like the idea of a, an alien race just being like, "You know what? Fuck everyone else, we're just mining everything." Like that's crazy. Like they're just It's super intimidating. Yeah. But like, but yeah. but don't you think, you know, that's was like are they keeping people from coming in or something from coming out? I'm I'm gonna say coming in. They don't they 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 don't <laughs> want people. 
I've been there. I saw it. Don't tell me. I saw it. I watched it. Don't tell me it didn't happen. Uh, um, uh, I, I think the last thing I, I want to say about this episode. No, second last thing, because no Jet Reno. There's there's one more. Um, oh boy. The, yeah. Especially during that ex- explanation scene, I wanted to see her there. Um, the Oo versus Tarka scene, where they're just like, mm-hmm. where she's just like breaking him down. Like, oh, it was such a good scene because we don't see mm-hmm. Owo do any of these types of things. And the fact that she could psychologically just like dismantle him in those what moments that they were together, that was brilliant. Like she needed to be need- taken down. I, like, yeah. I actually I loved specifically like talking about breaking him down when like she's about to choke him out, but let's go. Like she could have ended it right there, but kept going, I think, <laughs> after she choked him out. And yeah, I think it like kicked him a few times too. So mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, like I'm, I'm trying. Yeah, other other than that, I like that. Uh, Tarka thought he could just be like, you know what, be gone. Yeah. You're not as smart yeah. as me. And she's like, yeah. Yeah. exactly. Mm, whatever. And she's like, are you sure about that? Do you really think you're the smartest person in the room? Because you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, thank you. This is what I've been waiting for. We need more of uh, these like secondary characters, like oh, oh yes. and, and uh, like oh, Detmer. Yeah, oh, those... Detmer, please. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, we've been I getting little things like this season, which is nice, but more in general. Would yeah. be nice. That's it. Um, on on Twitch, Buick said uh, the effortless team up to wipe out the the two Emerald Chain randos was was perfect. I, which I, I agree with. Can that. I read I what that. Buick wrote? The other uh, Buick, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Owo hurt him so bad. Aaron Wright was embarrassed all the way in the Expanse universe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um. Amazing. We're we're. I'm going to try and I, I took notes this week. I'm going to try and get through these as quick as possible. Um, One person uh, I no one talked about yet that I absolutely love and just continues to be, I think like one of my favorite new Star Trek characters is Charles Vance. Um, mm. I love, I love his humanity. I love him at the beginning of this episode. I love him at the end of this episode. Um, He's not one of these, you know, admirals or bad rules that like has to like stick his chest out and be like, well, I'm making excuses for this, this, and this because Starfleet, blah, 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 blah. No, he's like, I knew Tarka like 10 for 10 years. He talked about all this great stuff. Obviously, I was wrong about him. I'm taking a page out of the president's book. I'm I'm like, this isn't even a covert mission. Like, I'll deal with the consequences. I'm ordering you to go do this. And if books there, like take care of the problem. I really like how down to business he gets and is just a very understanding person in command which we haven't gotten a lot of in star trek when it comes to some of like the admirals who've had you know arcs in in the trek universe so i loved him and i i love that he backed backed up michael at the end and was like she went in with no badge no authority nothing and look at everything that she still accomplished i really dug that Mm -hmm. um and uh just yeah like the the compliments you know that that Michael that that Vance gives Michael like you're you're the the best thinking captain that we have and like you're from the freaking you know 23rd century you know uh I, I really dug that uh I love that the crew all supported Michael in this episode like Saru is like we're here with you we get it this sucks and even though book has done something stupid even Stamets is like I really hope he's okay you know because everybody cares about him they, yeah. You know, yeah. he's a member Ober was with super upset point. about it. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, it was like, there's no way you could have possibly known. And I love that interaction. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the interactions, I, I know we've said this a few times this season, but Michael, Michael and Saru have become the like the 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 Kirk and Spock, right? Like mm-hmm. their relationship is so just cemented now to where you know it it it's been going for for four seasons, and I love that there's no more of this distrust that even, you know, even though this is like a tricky situation for Michael, because there's love involved, Saru knows that she's still like the right person for the job and, and, and tells her that, um, makeup, all the creatures and all the, the aliens in mm-hmm. this episode looked amazing. Um, Oz is just like, it was Oz, right. Or Ma. Oz, Oz. Yeah. Oz. Yeah. Oz. Yeah. Like oh. one of the coolest aliens I've seen in, in a really long time. Oh, whoa. I we love, love well. Yeah. I, I I don't know how much more I could say about her. I I also love that Michael understands how she operates and knows how her entire crew operates and knows who to bring along 
for these kind of missions. Their teamwork in this episode um, is brilliant. Like Brittany said, like bet on black. It's going to go well. Like this, this episode is just so amazing uh, for I all the black representation. I get it because they're also in a casino. <gasps> Double on top. Julia made a joke. I did. I did. Um, quick reunion. Um, I, I, I just made the point to say, like, I really just hope that they don't break up. I'm, I'm pulling for them still. Um, I don't think they're going to. Uh, the, the card scene. Um, the part of the reason that I love this episode so much, I was talking to Hawk before we started recording about like, I, I, I don't want to be one of those people who's like, oh, I love every single episode so much. But like, I, I have a little bit of a bias to why I love this episode so much. When we interviewed uh, Una McCormick about Wonderlands, the book about Michael's uh, year as a courier and, and how we kind of wanted some like more, you know, sh- shed some light on that. Like we got that in this episode, her connections, people she's worked with some, the fact that like, she's so close to this guy who's, Probably not like the best, you know, being in in the universe, but like they're cozy, they're tight, you know. That's I I I loved I loved the bit of Wonderland's connection. He's I, he's a friend until he's not. That's exactly. What they say. <laughs> Some exactly. of those are the most interesting friendships. He's like the Jabba to Han Solo, right? Kind of, maybe not. Jabba was just kind of always an ass. Uh, yeah. On my boogie. Um, the anyway. original one where he was just wearing a fur jacket. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, that's that's my thoughts. Uh, you guys oh, kind of did. Can, can most I add one more thing? Lifting. Yeah, of course. Um, the, there was a very small scene between Stamets and Culber, and it was yes. beautiful. Like, I love that Stamets took the time to take care of Culber, mm-hmm. who's been trying to take care of everyone. And, like, the weight of the whole ship is on Culber's shoulders. At least he feels that way. And the fact that Stamets noticed that and wanted to take care of him was beautiful. And I love them. Space Dad's awesome. And I just love there's, the simple. Oh, so Gar, go ahead, Jeff. There's one person. Oh, there's one person we didn't speak about. Tarka. Like nobody's. Yeah, I, know, I talked yeah, about just, Tarka. Yeah, Eric talked about Tarka. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. And- Tarka is just like Tarka. Place. I hate yeah. it. Even though Tarka is is you know in the background here, I feel like Tarka isn't the story. You know, He's it's, not. it's 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 so, it's book. It's I know you I have your Calvin theories. I know. I no, would. no, no. I thought that in the this episode they developed him in a way that you like to to hate him, kind of. I, I, I like mind him gets, in this episode. Yeah. I agree. It gets it gets shade thrown, like they call him Mr. Personality. <laughs> yeah. Like Book says, his filter was taken by from him by cognition pirates. Yeah. And like, <laughs> like the thing how they talk about him, like made me laugh so much. And it's just like, yeah, so what? And I kind mm-hmm. of grew to like him. I kind of like I, I'm into I'm into it now. I'm gonna throw Ooh. a draft um theory out there. I'm going to call them a theory. You have a theory? I have a theory. It could be bunnies. It it, it could be bunnies. Um, I think he's from where the DMA is from. I think he was sent out and he's he's not allowed back in. And his revenge is to try and blow them all up. It's a very interesting theory. I like it. That would be funny. I like it. That's that's, that's a draft size. Are you saying he's just doing it to get a rise out of the people he came from? Mm. Oh, get out of here. (laughs) Come on, he's got the little tattoo. I don't don't care for him, but I love that, like, Oh, well, it I took him down. Every, every other character got to shine, and they were just like, oh, this this fucking guy. Yeah, that was so funny. I was going to say, I do feel like he's being set up as uh, the final boss for this season. Ooh, the final boss. Okay. Well, All right. if, <laughs> if that's the case, then Owo can take him out. Because let me tell you, that dude stands his way. Not muscular at all. Thinks his brain is the strongest part of his body. So, you know, just one little... Mm-hmm. You can knock him out so fast. Guys, we still we have a lot to get through. Let's get in a little bit more detail about All In. Um, despite everything, Book and Michael... They still seem to want to make things work, despite being on very opposite ends of the table in more ways than Literally. one. Literally. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what do we What do we think about their whole back and forth this week? Because I think this is, even though they're they're against each other this week, this is some of the best acting they've done side by side together in two seasons. I love that they were still getting each other's back the whole time. Yeah. Up until that last moment, like that's yep. that's amazing, and that's why that scene where they went all in was so heartbreaking. It's because they knew that they had to do what they had to do. Yeah, I, I felt think like they, they still were have something their up their sleeve. Ooh. Wow. That's a card joke. Yes, it was. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> I have more, but I'll let you go. 
<laughs> Hawk, were you did you did you say your thing? Sorry. Um, I think I did, and then <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bernie had to make a card joke. I had to follow suit. <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh, you god. had to take that oh, gambit. My god. <laughs> Oh, oh, I have it in spades. Mm. Oh, yeah, God. I was just saying it felt like that. You know, it felt like their their relationship was on the line on that last hand. Um, you know, I don't know if they're going to come back from this. I think they will because I honestly think Tark is going to. You know, you know, I think basically Book is going to have a change of heart about what's going on, and you know, Tark is basically- he's going to figure out who Tark is, right? A change of yeah. hearts in the club uh, i don't know what the sound bite is i'm gonna play it and i it's it's like it's like making a you know making a bet in, in poker we'll see what this does before we get started oh no that's just says get out i was gonna <laughs> fight britney in the elevator i know what that that's from civil war oh no sorry uh winter soldier there we go too many sound bites end game when he says hail hydra no oh that's a great moment um uh, I know I kind of briefly touched on this but i i know a few a, a few of us have said before that we'd like to know a bit more about um, Michael's courier days after reading uh, the book Wonderlands. Did did this episode satisfy that itch, or do you do you want more still? No, more. <laughs> more. I think more. we all want a separate like thing. A Short whole, tracks. A separate little series. Yes. Short tracks. I want to see her growing out of like her grief and everything, learning stuff becoming less Vulcan, like all this. I want to see it. Now it's too late. Like, I don't want flashbacks. I want, I want this. I want the real deal. Give me a short mm-hmm. track. Give me like, give me something else. This is not enough. Um, this is just a taste. Butch LePew says going to have to seek out that book. Please do. Um, it's one yeah. of my favorite Star Trek books I've, I've ever read. One it's- of our favorite Star Trek books because our actual favorite Star Trek book is book. <laughs> oh, I, I thought it was the erotica Vulcan thing that <laughs> Jira was sorry. I'm sorry, was that Vulcan Love know. Slave? Was the erotica? Yeah, Vulcan Love Slave. <laughs> right? Yeah. Team Trey Con- so, it's I'm so Trey happy we were rated R again. Again. <laughs> I'm pretty uh, sure Ferengi's made it up, but I still want to read yeah. it. You I'm sure it's Amy. on uh, AO3. <laughs> Wait, no. Yeah. Ferengi probably have audiobooks for the lobes. Oh. <gasps> I don't know. Their lobes are very sensitive. Would they put headphones on? Or it's erotica. Earbuds. It's it erotic lobes. the whole time. Oh, yeah. I got it. Sorry, that one point. went over the head. That went over the head. Sorry. <laughs> uh, speaking of, of your your horrible puns tonight, uh, you and who's Amy says I can't deal with these puns, vocal tones. You're um, welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. That's what we. That's what you we're can beg here. for mercy. I won't give it. Um. Everybody you said this fold. and. <sighs> Oh, <laughs> impressive! I respect. Mm-hmm. Game. Shut up! Respect Are you game. But I'm all Are you in with me? these puns. <laughs> Is this what madness feels like? I feel like I just need a whole like Mariner laugh it's track. It's funny because I've literally here. I don't even play cards. Yeah, I just know words. No, but you you know uh, you know hand magic, right? Uh, yeah, eclipse well, magic. Because I'm eclipse like, did you? Is this <laughs> you guys? Uh, uh, um, the Borg we, Queen of Hearts. We've yeah. We've, we've all already said this a bunch. We'll say it again, uh, specifically also because it's Black History Month, and that's super important. You can't help but smile, right? The heart of this episode were three and four, if you count the scenes with uh, Colbert and Stamets, four amazing Black actors. What did we think about the diversity of, of this episode and the Michael Awoshikun team up? And then, you know, he, he got the award, the IndieWire Up and Coming Award, but another just masterful performance from uh, David Ajala. Yes, so I already lost my mind some ex- episode before where there was this uh, Med Bay scene with Pollard, yes. Book, who was here? Colbert and mm-hmm. Burnham. Mm-hmm. So I think that it's not just Black History Month. Like, Discovery has been doing it for some time. Mm-hmm. The thing I want to respect in Discovery, and it's something that they've been doing from the beginning, I think, of season four, I really appreciate how Burnham never says ho oh, oh. She always said mm-hmm. oh, she yep. could. Because that's yep. her name. And, you know, I see people with, like, different... Like, I don't even have a, my real name, Giraffe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even difficult. Wait, what? But, <laughs> <laughs> but people assume because I have an accent and because um, I look foreign uh that my name must be absolutely difficult to pronounce and like nope. we your name's the easiest somehow. french name in the world 
right? We'll like <laughs> shorten it somehow or, and I see that like, I, I, I work with a lot of people. I see people with like foreign name that get butchered or get like shortened. And every time Burnham says, oh, what she could. And today she said her full name mm-hmm. and added like an, oh, whoa. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. wow. Oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> wow. But still said her full name. I have to say that for me, this is what Discovery does. And it's not only Black History Month time, you know, mm-hmm. they've been doing that since the beginning and growing into it. Um, so, yeah, that's that's um, that's what for me was really important in that duo. It's that friendship, that respect and this full knowledge of the other too. Like we see they really know each other. Yeah. Right. Mm hmm. That was my rant. Thank you. <laughs> it's a good rant. <laughs> Anybody else on this? I'll go off on it. Do it. You guys are, I mean, I already mentioned this in my thoughts for the episode, but this really was the big part of the episode for me, was seeing all these characters being so integral to the plot this season, mind you, but then especially in this episode, having these moments with each other. Because, I mean, how many times has Michael and Oshikun actually, like, had scenes together, but they're always like in passing, like something's happening to the ship. Like they have these moments where like you you get that they have this relationship that forms together. But this was an episode that really showed like, this is like black women camaraderie. Like you see, they understand each other. Like they are so there for each other. They don't even question one another. Like never once in the episode yeah. do they really question. Like when Michael's concerned, it's more so just for like, I'm concerned for your safety because I care about you. Not that she even doubts that Owo can can do the fight at all. So I, I loved seeing that. I loved seeing more moments of them having that time together to do things. Like, I want away missions where, she, like, Michael joins just one other person. You get to see their dynamic or, you know, a group of people. It's fun. And It's just great listen. to see her off ship again. It is nice. You and know? that she got to show this other part of her that isn't yeah. just, like, the, the captain-y side. But she still yeah. is, without a doubt, the captain. Yeah. Um, David Ajala, listen... He is just perfect in this role. Mm-hmm. He's doing an incredible job as book. Like we all want him to get an enemy. An- an- I almost said an, an enemy. enemy. <laughs> his enemy is the DMA. Okay, <laughs> we want him to get an Emmy for his performance. Like I mean, there's so many amazing actors on the show that th- there's so many Emmy worthy performances. But he really is carrying like this plot and this like the emotional aspect of of the plot of the show for season four. Like he is the one going through the grief and the trauma and the pain of it all. And as much as, you know, Michael is always the heart of the show. It's, it's really nice to see that his character has a lot more going for him than just being a love interest, for example. Like, it's nice that he has that depth as well. And like I said before, it was nice to see, you know, you have these main characters of the show that all got to be in these scenes. Like it's, it's not just watching a a sci-fi show where it's like, okay, here's like 30, not 30 90 percent of the show is all like these white actors they throw in like two people occasionally like this was every single scene black actors were on screen like there was not a single scene without a black actor on it so it's nice to see and i hope that one day you're watching it and seeing stuff like that doesn't even register in your mind because you're just like this is normal but for me i I was just like damn this is fucking awesome let's fucking go i just want to say you hit it on the head too because as as much as this is kind of like Michael's season and and her you know first season as captain and and taking on that that role that we've been wanting her to be in for so long this is also 100 percent book season you know like it, this is this is his story almost more maybe than it is Michael's and that's really cool for for this show I love that so yeah can we appreciate how hot Sonequa looks while throwing a punch <laughs> look at this mm-hmm. like no I know effort, that sometimes no when you're effort. in action scenes, I get the they're effort. like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like you know, like sometimes when they animate stuff, they're like, we got to make the women still look like uh, while they're punching or whatever. But like, there's a reason why she's called right oh. hook, right? Yeah, yeah right? that's right. There was the right oh, hook. That's I why I had that. to put it up. I love it. Um, I just want to say real quick. Uh, I want to say thank you so much to to one of our awesome uh, patron collective members, Beef Lo Main uh, Simon. He is going off gifting a bunch of subs to people on Twitch. So Beef thank Lomaine. you. Thank so you. so much yeah Simon, that's awesome um final question of the night we get more details about the dma the big reveal that it's not a weapon i mean it is but it's not it's a drill 
uh, for the, this entity or species uh, at the, you know, at the edge of the Great Barrier um, or the Barrier of the Universe for something obviously that is like just so much bigger and how much bigger than you, you like you know can you get when you're talking about the dma uh thoughts on this huge development yeah Hawk. it's it made it all the more scarier in that i mean like it was scary enough that this you know huge anomaly appears and just destroys planets and everything that you know it comes into contact with and that but the fact that it's obviously it's just drilling equipment for a race that pretty much looks on on you know the rest of the galaxy as just ants or mm-hmm. whatever in yeah. its way like i can't even begin to compre- comprehend what these aliens will look like i just thought of apocalypse from the 90s x-men cut- cartoon where he's I was just, just like, watching it humans tonight. are to mutants as you know ants are to humans or whatever he has this like whole rant about mm-hmm. it and every time i hear about people like comparing even things mutants to ants can I'm like, feel the touch of pestilence <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, i love the animated series so. i i think we're in for uh Calvin verse. Um, <laughs> Where's the, that? We still need to bleep out, right? Nah, we'll leave it in. Who knew Just that they were going to be the descendants of Nero? Mm. Right, right. They're I like didn't the see good, that happen. The good Romulans and the bad Romulans. Oh, good yeah. Romulans. Bad new Romulans. Good. Um, no, Your but I cool, think though. we're gonna we're in for a twist. I don't think it's that simple. I don't think it's a don't bunch of people. Either. I agree that, that drills do like, twist a lot. <laughs> it's not a bunch of people I don't know just what the protect. Hell is going on? <laughs> Come on! <laughs> that was for Brittany. I'm sorry, she deserved it. <laughs> it's not a bunch of people who just protect themselves from the outside and have like this giant barrier. I'm pretty sure there's something else. I'm pretty sure it's not that easy. Come on, they have like this awesome technology and they just throw a drill in the middle of nowhere and be like, Meh, maybe it's gonna kill some little ants. Nah, I, I think they I'm control sure it, you know? You, you. <laughs> I'm sure it's like, 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 a, like, it does spin around. Mm. yeah, that or it's like attracted to specific, like, that material that it says, like, yeah, there's, I am there's just sure an abundance of it at that be, one place, yeah. yeah. I'm sure it's more complicated than this, and I'm in into the we're trying to keep something inside. Like, I want I. Mm, do you want it to be so a, a species we've seen already, or do you want it to be like something totally new? It's the fucking so, Klingons. It's the Klingons. Hey, God, the Klingons. <laughs> <laughs> They're speaking about this tilth um, that Til- we're not Dilf? supposed to know. Uh, it's Is a that drill like the spin. fuck? <laughs> tilth. <laughs> Oh. Brittany, that <laughs> Indian food you had, man. Like, <laughs> I'm coffee. so tired from work. You don't even know. <laughs> this is I, peak um, Brittany. It's a Jacob's gun. Like they're talking about it. They're gonna. They have to do something about it. Um, I mean, it would be Star Trek if they just like drop that and forget about it forever. But <laughs> you, mean you don't think that the, this entity would change their mind? I, I, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to leave. Giraffe, because I, I can't. I have to tell you something. I have a spoiler oh for you. I, I, I watched the season finale already, and it's, oh, yeah. it's a Kelpian oh, yeah. screaming into the void. <laughs> and, and that's, that's it's it a Kelpian jail. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no. They had to change their methods from dynamite back in the day, yeah. you know? It's just, just how it is. Uh, no, that would be awful. Um, Any other thoughts before we move on? Yeah, go ahead, Britt. I'm surprised none of you made a fracking joke. They're literally yeah, drilling. Yeah, true. <laughs> That's fair. They might be that, making a pipeline. We it, don't know, but like it's in the sci-fi fracking sci-fi. ship. <laughs> fracking. Sorry, I had to get my my Colonel tie on. Yes. I just I just want to read some of the thing that has says because I think mm-hmm. they're so hilarious. <laughs> so a swamp cat couldn't have could have learned the Horton Russell since I last saw you, Horton. I had to scurry like a spider cow, and I think it's a reference to Lower Decks, a spider cow. I think yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Dude, I lost my mind. Uh, while you two were strutting around like Klingons in the disco, finally mm-hmm. we're speaking about the Klingons. Well, they're also Act pointing like out a- that there's no Klingons in this disco. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. Mm-hmm. Act like an armus, swim the Poranthian ocean with weighted boots. I mean, there are others, but I don't understand. I missed the Armus reference. That's awesome. I I just loved everything he said. I was like, this sounds amazing. I want a sheet of one of those things where you pull like the calendar and there's a different proverb. 
I feel like I didn't I speak missed... enough about him in this episode because I loved that character. I have a lot. I have missed you like a Kardashian. Kardash- I cannot pronounce that. Kardashian, yeah. Mrs. Cake. I like that one. That was a that great one. Great. Yep. Yeah. I like that yeah. one a lot. That's all. I'm uh... nice. I like it. <laughs> um, Beef Lomain wrote on Twitch, I'm keeping the spirit of TOS alive. This is going to just be some child's toy. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh, it's like Men in Black. Absolutely. Some yep. marble. Yeah. Or this the whole universe is on the marble. Oh, is house. it a Janet? Is it a Janice or ja- Janet? 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 Disco Janet, Janet. A marble Janet. Disco oh. Janet. Oh Janet. man, I can make all of the good place jokes now because I you finally can, watched yeah. it. Um, I I just have to say before we go to the poll, the last thing I want to say: if anybody watched the Ready Room, and you have acted at all in your life if you've gone to theater school if you're a theater major college if you've acted on stage or on film or in television will wheaton going off about david ajala and sonequa martin green's acting in this episode and and um i, I i'm sorry i don't know the the actor's name right now who plays owo she's amazing um but just like nerding out about like acting methods and you know being in acting school and so learning how to like bring the mood up and it was just it was really fun to see will wheaton like nerd out a bit and if, and if you didn't know this will wheaton after his star trek career was also a professional poker player for a very long time played in a few uh really? world series of poker so he was nerding out about the per- poker scene as well so uh, thank you, uh, Joaquin. Slowly, it is Oyen Al- Alajo. Yeah, I was about to tell yeah. you. I was waiting uh, for you. To thank finish. you. I appreciate Oyen it. Oladejo. Al- Oladejo. 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 Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, she's absolutely amazing. Guys, let's move on to the subspace to poll and mailbag. Hailing frequencies are open. And uh, Brittany, did you did you come up with any this week? Do you want to fight me or did you like mine? No, I liked them. All right, sweet. Would you like no to complaints. read them? I can read them. So in our to poll, 33% said Royal Flush. 43% said All In on Oh Wow. 19% said Close the Book. And 5% said Just Stay Down. Who are you 5%? And you're 19% for Just Close the Book, too. Mm. I don't know. I mean, I think a lot of people just thrown off because of the hiatus. Yeah. I think if we would have gone right into this episode, it would have probably had higher ratings. True. Speaking of ratings, said, we didn't rate this episode. Oh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was just going to say, Owo oh, oh, can choke me out with her leg any day. <laughs> there like, you go. When she ended with that, I was just like, my queen, I would die for you. I owe <laughs> you my life. Um, we also didn't talk about the changeling, who was maybe was part of the great link. Sitting, I was just, sitting yeah. on that. like <sighs> The makeup looked very, very founder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially yep, and turned into a mm-hmm. tribble. Tribble mm-hmm. that was tribble. awesome. Anyway, uh, I think a lot of people are on the on the side of that was a a member of the Great Link. So yeah, very cool moment. Uh, let's the read this episode that... real quick. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say the dude that Owo beat up was Shakun in his boots. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep going. Uh, let's Hello, read this Shikun. episode out of ten strips of gold pressed platinum. Uh, we'll go in the order of. The show, which was giraffe. somewhere giraffe, you're up first. I'm gonna give it an eight. Uh, I like it, loved it, a lot of things, but I need uh, Fred. <laughs> yeah, fair, Brittany. I think I'll also give it an eight out of ten because I thought it was a solid episode. I liked it for what it was, but it wasn't like mind blowing in the way that I'm like, you have to watch it now. Ten out of ten. <laughs> Nice. Uh, Huck. Uh, I'm going to go 9 out of 10 on that. I really like this episode a lot. Um, great character interactions. Um, we have moved the DMA story into a whole new stratosphere. Um, and, you know, I am so excited about the next five episodes. Nice. Eric. 8 out of 10. Um, Michael and Book, the card game was just amazing, brilliant. And OO dressing down Tarka was probably my favorite part of the whole episode. <laughs> awesome. uh, but tragically, no Jet Reno. No Jet, no Reno. Jet Reno. That's why. No Reno. That's Two why points. Tiny... Yep. Two points. Um, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 to I'm with Hawk. I really love this episode. Um, yeah, it, 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 it came in a weird spot because of the whole weird mid-season finale or whatever you want to call it. Um, but great episode. Loved it. I want to watch it again. Uh, let's get into some mailbag. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we'll just... 
go from the top again. Um, what did I do here? Oh, that's what I did here. I'm so lost tonight. Sorry, guys. I'm disorganized. Who? Uh, yeah. Draft. You're lost just like book. I am lost. Lost to Tarka. Uh, draft. Mm. Would you like to read Butch Le Pew's? Yes, reading Rainbow mailbag. with Giraffe. <laughs> but Chile Pew wrote, mouth hanging open at that last five minutes. Can't wait to find out more about Species 10C. Anyway, the episode flowed well. Change of scenes was fairly seamless. Was very surprised to see so much interaction between Book and Michael. Thought we'd have to wait longer to see them tangle. Loved seeing the casino-like atmosphere atmosphere in that bar. And finally, a mention of the Klingons. Finally. Good tension in the poker game. Had a feeling that Michael would be fiddling with that isolinium somehow, but was still mm-hmm. pleasantly surprised at what she managed to pull off. All in all, so glad this guy is back. Love this episode. Listen, nice. Michael always has the upper hand. She does. It's true. And not this time. Hard she guess. lost the book, to be fair. Uh, real quick, before we get to the next mailbag, ratings on Twitch. I was waiting for a few more to come in. Haven, I will rate it 10 bars, not just strips. Straight up, 10 out of 10 bars, Ooh. gold press latinum. Uh, Joaquin slowly says, I gave it an 8 earlier, but I think I might agree with Hawk after pointing out the Maverick vibe, so raising it to a 9. And J Crabs have joke is that I give it an 8.5 strips of Gold press latinum. Brittany, would you like to take, speaking of Haven, their awesome I wanted to read mailbag. SMK. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> well, then, no, that's fine. You can read SMK's Hawk. Take uh, Haven's. Uh, Haven wrote, I love the callback to TNG with the poker game. To me, seeing a poker game is pure trek in any form. I missed the Klingon reference. I was completely shocked that Book won the game, but I guess I am used to the good guys always winning. I knew the president would completely see through the loophole that Michael, but at least we got some good plot points for an upcoming episode. Nice. Agreed. Indeed. Pretty good. SMK wrote, all I can say is Joanna Woshakun is a fucking badass. <laughs> and, which, which I also told him earlier is peak mailbag because it is 100% a fact right? of this episode. That's what yeah. everybody amazing. comes out of this episode just being like, like fucking yes. a Woshakun. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Baller, yeah. baller. Yep. Uh, Eric, take us home with Joe's. Uh, Joe wrote, I love Burnham and Booker playing poker. It was a lot of fun watching them play. They seemed like they were having a lot of fun with it. I love when we got, uh, I love that. Uh, I love when we get a Joanne Owokasun is a badass episode. Also, Haz was great. Yeah. It was cool to see, to see him again. We Have we seen him before? Who? No, I don't think has? we've seen him before. He's a has been. Oh, it would, it would be cool to see oh, him it again. Would be great. It would oh, be- it would be great. It would be cool to yeah. see him again. Ah, okay. Yeah, there it is. Yep, cool. We'll see what the future has to offer. Yep. Um, see, Julian's so done. He's like, we're wrapping up the show. Yeah, I, I am wrapping it <laughs> Not up. Not even okay, like, <laughs> nope. done. Done. I'm so tired, guys. The puns weren't good, but they were plentiful. They hey, were, I just they, drank they were, they were out of something ones. was close, so. Yep, it's been that kind of day. Uh, guys, that's going to do it for our show this week. We will be back with the rest of Discovery season four every week um we'll keep you updated we're going to have a couple of scheduling changes um as picard comes on as well as captain picard week we will keep you um updated on all those details that's going to do it guys when this show ends we are so excited our patron collective members at the cerritos lounge and above we're having our first ever post pod hang it's going to be a good time zoom link is in your uh on patreon so just go check that out give us about five minutes to wrap up everything and then come on in it's going to be fun and uh that's going to do it so for hawk for eric for Brittany, for giraffe i am julian i say live long and prosper majram good night Thanks for beaming into our podcast today. If you want to keep the hailing frequencies open, you can subscribe on Apple and Google Podcasts, YouTube, and Spotify. Like what you hear? Put in a good word with Starfleet and leave us a five-star review.